you won't believe what I just built with this tiny display. This is my fourth video on the Emotech ESP32 S3 AMOLED with a 1.8 inch FT3168 touch display. But this time, I have taken things to the next level. I connected this display to my custom BLE Android application and guess what? Whenever I get a call, the caller's name pops up right here. One tape to answer, one tape to reject. And not just that, if I reject the call, the system automatically sends a message back to the caller. You can also pre-write different messages for different situations. But that's not all. If I swipe left on the screen, it takes me to screen 2 where I have added a switch. Using this switch, I can turn the motorcycle engine on and off. And just like that, you can add more switches to control things like motorcycle lights and other components. Now, imagine using this display in a car, you could control the doors, AC, lights, and so much more. For demonstration purposes, I have connected this white LED. This display is extremely user-friendly, and it even comes with a GPIO connector ribbon cable. You can easily connect it to any custom PCB to not only control various devices, but also monitor sensors. In part 3, I used it with a DS18B20 waterproof one-wire digital temperature sensor. And yes, the entire UI you are seeing here is designed in Squareline Studio. Throughout this whole series, I have been using Squareline Studio and LVGL. Before building this project, I highly recommend watching my previous three videos where I have explained everything step by step. So in this video, I won't repeat those steps, otherwise it will get too long and boring. And since this is an advanced level project, it's important that you are already familiar with Squareline Studio and LVGL. Anyway, I also implemented the same idea on my smartwatch and it worked exceptionally well. So first I will give you a quick overview of the design and programming for this project and then I will fully demonstrate how it works. Before you start the interfacing, make sure to download the spinout diagram. It will save you a lot of time and confusion later. Connect the node leg of the LED to the GPIO21 and connect the ground wire of the LED to the ground pin on the GPIO connector ribbon cable. You can replace the LED with a MOSFET or a relay to control high current and high voltage loads. I really like this display because it has so many GPIO pins. I can not only monitor multiple sensors but also control multiple loads with ease. This is my project folder. Inside this folder, you will find the main Arduino.ino file and two additional folders, one for the Squareline Studio project files and another for the UI files. You can download this entire folder from my Patreon page. Now, if I open the Squareline Studio project files folder, you will see that I have already saved the project in it. So let's quickly go ahead and import this project into Squareline Studio. I've used a total of two screens, but of course you can add more screens if you like. I've already explained how to do that in my previous videos. To switch between the two screens, I have added chain screen events. While screen 1 is selected, if I go to the inspector tab and scroll down, you can see that I have added an event. The trigger type is set to gesture left, the action type is set to change screen, and the target screen is set to screen 2. Now, if I select screen 2, the trigger type is set to gesture right, the action type is again set to change screen, and the target screen is set to screen 1. On screen 1, I have added a label and two buttons. This label will display the caller's name. I have named it LBL Caller and for the text, I have simply written Caller. If I scroll down, go to the style settings and click on text, you will see that I have set the font size to 26. You can also use a custom font here. In part 2, I used a 7 segment font for a digital watch. In that same video, I also showed how to create an analog watch. Anyway, I have kept the text very simple, but if you want, you can style the caller text beautifully. You can even add animations to make it more visually appealing. Now, let me tell you about these buttons. If I click on the accept button, you will see that I have named it PTN accept. Now, if I scroll down, you can see I have added an event. When this button is clicked, it calls a function named accept call fun. This function sends a control signal or Bluetooth to the phone to accept the call. Also, don't forget to check the do not export function option. Now, if I select the reject button, it sends a control signal over Bluetooth to reject the call and also sends a message to the caller. And if I scroll up, you will see that I have named this button BTN Reject. On screen 2, I have added a single switch and as I mentioned earlier, you can add multiple switches to control multiple loads. For now, you can see I have named this switch Switch Load. 
If I scroll down, you will notice the switch calls a function named load one fun, which turns the LD on or off based on the switch state. After designing the UI in SQLand Studio, you already know what to do next. Simply save the project and then export the UI files. Next, go to the UI files folder, copy all the generated files, and paste them into the same folder where your main Arduino.ino file is located. As you can see, I have already pasted all the files here. Now let's open the Arduino file. Next, you will need to upload this code, which you can download from my Patreon page. To accept or reject a call, you will also need the BLE application that I designed. It's available in my Patreon shop at a super affordable price. Once you download the source code of the BLE application, you can totally make it your own. Just add whatever custom features you need. As you can see, the BLE application is connected to the display. Now, let me practically demonstrate how it accepts and rejects a call. After rejecting the call, it even automatically sent a message to the caller. This is crazy. Now, if I switch over to screen 2, using this switch, we can control almost anything. For demonstration purposes, I have connected a white LED, but you can easily replace this with a MOSFET or a relay to control high voltage or high amperage loads. This is a complete two-way communication system and you can fully customize it based on your needs. You can tweak the system in minutes, add new buttons, change actions, anything you want, it's that user-friendly. As you can see, I have even implemented the same idea on my smartwatch just to show you that this application can be used with any display and any controller. Download the source codes and start building your own futuristic interactive displays. And if you ever need help, I'm right there on Patreon to support you. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.